Let's now have a look at the next question. This is on financial instrument embedded derivative. Generally, we do not see you know, uh, questions on embedded derivative in the examination. But yes, if at all it comes, then it can actually be a nightmare for a lot of students. Okay. So let's look at this question, a very good question. And we will relate this with the respective theory and see how to answer this question. ZX issues a fixed rate loan for 5 lakhs. ZX issues means ZX is issuing the loan. That means it is borrowing. And incurs issue cost of 20,000 resulting in an initial carrying value of 480. So, 480 is the amount of the you know, net proceeds. The loan carries an interest rate of 8% per annum and is repayable at par at the end of 10 years. So, 8% is the rate repayment is happening at par. However, under the contract, ZS can call the loan at any time after year 4 by paying a fixed premium of 30,000. So, ZX they have taken loan. Issues loan means they have taken a loan. Okay, It is not that they have given loan. They have taken a loan. Issue loan like issuing debenture. They have taken a loan. Now, after year 4 at any time, they can pay a premium of 30,000 and they can settle the loan. So, let us say in the fifth year if they want to settle the loan, how much they need to pay? They will have to pay 5 lakhs and 30,000. So, total amount payable would be 5 lakhs 30,000. This 30 of premium means the extra amount payable over the face value of the loan. The fair value of the option is rupees 10,000 at inception. So now always remember whenever there is an option, who has the option? ZX has the option. Option to prepay the loan. If they have the option, always remember the other party has an obligation. So if you are the investor in this company or if you have given the loan, whenever ZX says I want to repay the loan, you have to accept the repayment. Now, the holder of the option, who is the holder of the option? ZX is the holder of the option and fair value is 10,000. So, fair value of the call option at inception is 10,000. Okay. The effective interest rate amounts to 8.30213%. So, the effective interest rate will be 8.30213% after considering all of this. So, in this case, you have a loan and you have an option on the loan. So, the loan is the host contract and this option on the loan is what? This option on the loan is the embedded derivative. There is a derivative embedded onto the host contract. Now, the first thing that we have to see is whether we need to separate these or account for them as a single contract. This is a financial liability. See, if it is a financial asset, it is simple and straightforward. Here it is a liability. Now, do we need to separate or do we need to keep them as a single contract? That is what is the question. Now, how do we decide that the host contract and the prepayment option have to be separated? First thing you have to check is whether the option excise price is approximately equal to the amortized cost of the host. So, we have to see what is the ACM closing balance and what is the excise price? Excise price is not 30,000, okay? It is 5 lakhs 30,000 because I have to pay 5 lakh 30,000 to prepay. Now, is this closing balance approximately equal to this 5 lakh 30 or if this 530 equal to closing balance? How do we check that? See, opening balance is 480, for example. This goes on till 500. At any point of time, will this be closer to 530? No, because maximum closing balance will be 5 lakhs, which means the excise price is not approximately equal to the amortized cost. So, if this is not satisfied, we will check whether the excise price reimburses the lender present value of lost interest for remaining term. Now, what is this present value of lost interest? Say, for example, interest rate is 8%. When will the borrower repay? If 8% becomes 7%, the borrower will repay. Correct. Now, when the borrower repays, look at it from the lender's point of view. He initially gave a loan at 8%. Now, he got the loan back. Now, at what rate can he you know, lend the money? He can lend at only 7% means he is losing 1% of interest. Does this 1% of interest loss for let us say 6 years, if he repay at the end of 4th year, does 1% of interest lost for 6 years period, is the present value equal to the excise price? If the answer is yes, then we will account it as a single contract. If the answer is no, we will account for it as separate contract. Now, in the question, they have not given what is the interest saved and all of that. We cannot determine that. So, we assume that it will not reimburse the present value of lost interest and hence we will account for them as separate contracts. Okay. So, having understood this, let us look at the solution. When you account for these as separate contract, the fair value of call option will be one contract. 
Now for the holder of the option, is it a derivative asset or a derivative liability? If I am holding the option, I have a right. I have a right and that becomes my derivative asset. So there is a derivative asset of 10,000, not 1 lakh. Derivative asset of 10,000, the first thing. Second is, what is the net proceeds from the loan? Net proceeds from the loan is 4 lakh 80,000. So we got a derivative asset for 10,000. Then we got cash, we borrowed, right? Cash or bank, how much? 480,000. These are the assets that we got. Hence, the financial liability will be 490,000. So, why is the financial liability 490 and not 480? Think of it this way. We took a loan of 5 lakhs. We incurred 20,000 cost. So, net loan was 480,000 from the other party. But we also got an option. We also got an option. So, the value of the option is 10,000. So, total value of liability is 490. Or think of it in this way that now the other way to look at this is if I need the option of this 10,000 I would have paid 10,000 okay I would have paid 10,000 to the other party and how much net amount did I receive I received 480 but did I pay this 10,000 so did I pay this 10,000 no how much did I receive 480 so net net the value of the liability is 4 lakh 90 thousand okay so initially we will recognize the liability at 4 lakh 90 thousand all right how is the embedded issuer only call feature accounted for by the ZX initially? So initially we will have to say that okay the conditions for accounting for them as a single contract is not met. We will separate them, account for the derivative asset separately and the loan liability separately. Explain the accounting of loan when in year 1 and 2 there is no change in interest rate since inception for an instrument of similar maturity and the option fair value at the end of year 2 is 6000. Now please understand that. We have accounted for a liability and asset. This financial liability will follow what? Amortized cost. We will follow amortized cost method. This derivative asset we will do fair valuation. Originally it is at 10,000. Here the option fair value is 6,000. So we will book a loss of 4,000. At the end of year 3, the interest rates have fallen and the option fair value increases to 9,000. Now please understand from issuer's point of view, when interest falls, when interest rate falls, it is always better to prepay the loan. Okay, so if I have a call option or if I have an option to prepay the loan, if in the market interest rates have fallen, I will prepay the loan. But this does not change my original financial liability accounting. That will continue as per amortized cost method. So what will change? The fair value is 9000, so we will book another profit of 3000. At the end of year 4, interest rates have fallen further, the option fair value increases to 20,000 and the entity decides to repay the loan at the end of year 4. So here what has happened, fair value increases to 20,000 at the end of year 4 and the entity decides to repay the loan at the end of year 4. So we will do fair valuation of the um, you know, option and we will do the accounting for prepayment of the loan. So let us look at the answer. It is first necessary to determine whether the call option is closely related to the host debt instrument. Because the fixed premium is required to be paid whenever the call option is exercised, it is not known if it will be equal to the present value of any interest lost during the remaining term after the exercise of the option. One is you can say it is not known and the other one I said even if you calculate, if, even if you assume it is repaid at the end of year 4 and if you calculate the present value of interest lost that is not equal to the value of the premium that you are paying. Additionally, the option excise price is 5 lakh 30,000. This we have already seen. Therefore, it is unlikely to be approximately equal to the debt amortized cost in year 4 or any subsequent year because it will not be more than 5,000. It will not be more than 5,000. So, it is unlikely that it will be closely equal to the amortized cost of the liability. Hence, the call option shall be separated from the host, host debt contract and accounted for separately. This assumes that the expected life of the instrument is 10 years. Even if the expected life is assumed to be 4 years, 10 year loan with a call option after 4 years is economically same as 4 year loan with a 6 year extension option. Then they have given some alternate way to understand that saying that if you do not consider this to be a 10 year loan, but if you consider it to be a 4 year loan with an extension option for another 6 years and rates are not being changed. So option is different from the host contract. This is one more additional inference way which you can ignore for the moment. 
The option is out of the money at inception because the option's excise price is greater than the debt instrument's carrying value. It still has time value. So, what, what are they saying? Basically, what they are saying is at inception, the loan amount is 5 lakh, the settlement amount is 5 lakh 30,000. Okay, settlement amount is 5 lakh 30,000. So, settlement amount is 5 lakh 30,000. Now, if I have a loan of 5 lakhs, why will I pay 5 lakh 30,000? Okay, that is why they are saying it is out of the money. However, there is time value of money, and subsequently, if the interest rate changes, the fair value will also change. Now, what is the accounting entries at inception? We have seen that the embedded option derivative asset has fair value of 10,000. So, we will debit the embedded option, debit cash and credit the debt instrument that or that is the liability. Now, this 490 that we are accounting is a separate contract assuming there is no call option. That is why we are separating. Okay. It is a hybrid contract where you have an option, option we have separated and the host is kept separately. So, what is the value of bond with call option? Value of bond with call option is equal to 4,80,000 in our case. Okay, because we got 4,80,000 for issuing that bond. What is the value of the bond without the call option? 4,90,000. Why is that difference? The 10,000 of derivative option. So, the value of callable bond is equal to the value of a straight bond less value of the option feature. Straight bond is this, 490. What is the option feature value? 10,000. So, the net amount becomes 4,80,000. Okay. I gave you the underlying logic also. Think of it in this way that we took a loan and we got 4,80,000 net amount. Okay. Now, we should have got 5 lakhs. We should have got 5 lakhs. We paid 20,000 of processing charges. So, we got 4,80,000. Plus, we also got a derivative option of 10,000. So, totally we got 4,90,000 which is the fair value of the liability. This embedded der derivative option will be accounted for using the fair value and whatever is the gain or loss will be taken to the PNL. This value of loan 4,90,000, we will prepare our amortization table. So, opening cost 4,90,000 interest expense using the effective interest rate. So, 490 into 8.30213, 490 into 8.30213 is how much? 40680 and 40,000 is the payment. This is the closing balance. This we can prepare. Nowhere it is closer to 530,000. That is what I was trying to explain. Okay. Now, every year interest expense of this will be recognized and payment of 40,000 will be recognized. In year 1 to no change in interest and in year 1 to there is no change in interest rate since inception for an instrument of similar maturity and rating fair value is 6000. So, 10,000 became how much 6000 we will recognize a loss of 4000. At the end of year 3 the fair value is 9000. So, what happened initially it was 10,000. Okay, Then it came down to 6000. So, we recorded a loss of 4000. Then it became how much? 9000. So, 6000 to 9000 will record a profit of 3000. Then now it is how much? 20000. 9000 to 20000, 11000 profit will be recorded. Now, what did they say? They said that we, have, we will settle this at the end of year 4. So, what is the closing balance? 493080, that is the value, closing balance that amount will be settled. So, we will de-recognize the loan 493080. How much did we pay? 530000 we paid. How much did we pay? 530000 we paid. Also, this option is no longer with us. So, that also we are transferring out. So, totally 550000 you can consider to be the deemed outflow and 493000 is the carrying amount. Difference will be taken to PNL. Difference will be taken to PNL. Okay. So, if you look at it for the first time, you may see that you know the question looks like complicated, but once you do the solution, you will feel comfortable with the question.